promise made and promise fulfilled. That is the way I'll be beginning the program today on Trailblazers Africa. I did promise you last week when I uh, hosted the mayor of Accra, His Excellency, uh, Honorable Alfred Van der Poyer, that I'll be bringing him back to really conclude what we started last week. Last week was not enough for us to look at some of the issues uh, I have to really strengthen up within. Uh, last week we ended at the area of sanitation and uh, his parting word was that we must all keep all the refuses, refuse around, around us and ensure that we dispose them twice a week. That was the word, uh, that was his statement last week. Well, I am privileged to have him back uh, on the program today, but uh, let me quickly tell you that I have so many information uh, for you, especially last week we were looking at the five cities that were judged, you know, neatest in Africa. I have gotten, I mean six, I have gotten the six cities right here with me. My name is Moses Opadi, and uh, His Excellency, the Honorable Alfred Van der Poer, the mayor of Accra is right with me in the studio. I want to say welcome back again, sir. Thank you. I hope uh, I'm not pushing you too hard. No, no, at all. <laughs> I'm relaxed. Yeah. Now, last week, uh, we ended at the area of uh, sanitation. And uh, you, I did ask you a question that I am interested in knowing this city. Let me quickly say that uh, Ghana, the capital city of, uh, I mean, uh, Accra, the capital city of Ghana, has received high score for sanitation and environmental management at the last United Nations Climate Change Conference held in South Africa. Accra is also among five other African cities rated above average in the African Green City Index. The index which was released in the ban says that we have South Africa, in South Africa, on the sideline of the ongoing uh, see, COP17 put Accra as one of the neatest cities in Africa. And other cities are Cape Town in South Africa, Casablanca, I mean Cape Town, Casablanca, Durban, Johannesburg, and Tunis. Uh, 11, uh, about 15 countries were really judged. Uh, fortunate enough, Nigeria was part, uh, Pretoria, uh, Cape Town, Casablanca, Durban, Johannesburg, Tunis, Alexandria, uh, Ababa, Addis Ababa, Nairobi, Luanda, Maputo, and um, Dar es Salaam were all, you know, uh, part of the studies. But guess what? Only six that I earlier mentioned made it. Well, let me start by saying congratulations to His Excellency for achieving that. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. What was the secret? I mean, the secret <laughs> is that, you know, the president, His Excellency Professor Ivan Satamils, uh, since beginning of his administration, have um, you know, as I said the last time, have expressed high expectation for performance on all of the district assemblies, and uh, he has always said that we should do the right thing, and uh, you know, AMA has always taken the expectations and the words of the president very seriously, mm -hmm. and uh, his goals for us to bring development to the doorsteps of the people and to make sure that we do the right thing. So we, we started by making sure that we have put the right system in place. Okay. And so last week I informed you that we put in place the polluter pay system. The polluter pay system, which means that if you create refuse, if you create trash, you must pay for its disposal. Mm. And, uh, you know, we registered uh, residents, businesses. We brought in nine refuse companies, and we gave them the responsibility to collect the refuse and dispose of it. And uh, we are monitoring. We have set up sanitation courts. We have set up, uh, you know, our monitoring system, and we are on the field. We are on the ground. We monitor it every day. We make sure that the ref refuse is picked up and is picked up on time. Where we have challenges, we work with the community, we work with the people. And every day we are making progress. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that we have arrived yet, you know, but we are working at it every day. And uh, our eye is on the ball to make sure that we don't have heaps of refuse anywhere in Accra. And also that, that, that uh, we pick up the refuse in every household at least twice every week. Yeah, Your Excellency, uh, one major concern that um, I have noticed is the issue of posters, you know, being pasted around the city uh, anyhow. Uh, what, what are, are you doing anything in that regard yes, as well? Yes, we are working on it. 
we are you know monitoring that and uh, when we see posters we go out and we clear it but uh, we have even taken it we are taking it further we are taking it further in the sense that we are beginning to notice and identify those who have been you know uh, putting those posters up churches and uh, uh, other entertainment uh, companies and organizations yeah, movie who, producers uh, and producers and yeah. all that you know so we are now beginning to take their phone numbers and to go directly at them to ensure that look we just do not go out and put posters just anywhere you know the environment must be maintained mm -hmm. to the standard that it ignores to our benefit and to the fact that you know it helps in the beautification and the keeping of standards within the uh, the city uh, I about, uh, sorry to ask this, the politicians too that are posting their posters around city. Uh, yes. Uh, how, would you, how would you tackle yourself? Uh, well, you no, know, we, we have to all play. All of us have to play by the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody is above the law. And if somebody is going to mount uh, a, a billboard or put up a poster, and they need to come to AMA, they need to make sure that they get their appropriate permits. They need to ensure that, you know, whatever they are doing is done within the confinements of the expectations of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Are, are there designated areas where posters must be pasted? Must be pasted? Because uh, uh, permit me to say that uh, this year we are going to see a lot of posters in town. Yes. And uh, Accra being one of the neatest cities now in Africa, uh, we wouldn't want it to degenerate again to where it was rated the dirtiest. Yes. So what, what plans are in place? Well, our that? goal is to maintain the polluter pay system. And within the implementation of the polluter pay system, our goal is to register more of our residents, more of our uh, you know, uh, commercial entities, more of our businesses, to get everybody on board. It is when we have gotten everybody on board and everybody's refuse is being picked up and it's being picked up on time. And then we have also developed to the extent where we have a scientific way of disposing of our refuse. You know, then we would have arrived. Then we will have to maintain that system to make sure that we are all doing the right thing. Yes, so we will not relent on our efforts. We will continue to work hard. We were rated uh, above average. We will work on that. And the next time when we hope that the rating will have to be done again, uh, we will work below, we would have worked below, I mean, above average and to the realms of uh, areas of excellence. That is our goal, you know. Mm -hmm. So we are going to work at it every day. Our goal is to achieve excellence, and we can do it. You know, we just have to be strong on the monitoring and make sure that those who fail to play by the rules, that we put them before the sanitation courts and get them to do the right thing. It is about doing the right thing, which would, as I said, will be of benefit to everybody. It will take care of our health. It will take care of maintaining longevity with our lives. You know, it will improve our environment to the extent that it will help all of us. All of us stand to benefit. Well, I'm here to help you. That is the logo that His Excellency is always carrying about. Yes. I've also seen it again right on his chest. Uh, I am here to help, uh, to help him. And he's here to really help us uh, to look very good and uh, the environment to be very clean. Uh, one day I was coming and I saw you at Seco, uh, the new plast station, uh, with some of your guys. Mm -hmm. What exactly were you doing there? No, I saw a lot of people looking at you, but you never mind them. No, no, no. You so know. What exactly were you doing? Look, I was, I, I was born in Accra. I was raised in Accra. I went to school in Accra. I've lived in Accra all my life. Um, I'm just happening by the grace of God to be the mayor of Accra today. Tomorrow, I might not be the mayor of Accra. I like walking. I like to, you know, I like to go into the community. I like to talk to the people. I love to do that. So I will continue to do that. Um, and so, you know, I go to Kwame Nkrumah Circle from time to time. I stop there. I listen to people. I talk to the traders, uh, you know, and then I pick up information too. Why would they want, what would they want to see Circle? How would they want to see Accra develop? How are they, you know, understanding the implementation of our bylaws and policies? You know, I like to engage with the people, you know, and so I love doing it. But um, I believe that if you may have, if it was after the flood, then, um, you know, uh, after the flood, I went to the Kwame Nkrumah Circle and uh, observed with the, His Excellency the President uh, when we you know, looked at things. And mm. we realized that a lot of damage has been done 
to the bridge over the Odor River. And then also, um, there is the need to desilt the Odor River. And there is a lot of work that needs to be done at Odor from the Kwame Nkrumah, I'm sorry, from the Ghanaian Times uh, traffic light mm. to the Kwame Nkrumah circle. A lot of work has to be done. So I've been going there very often to look at what we need to do, uh, what, what, what we need to do in terms of getting the uh, Odor River desilted and then getting also repairs to the Odor Bridge and then repairing also and rebuilding the storm drain from okay. the Kwame Nkrumah, I'm sorry, from the Ghanaian Times yeah. junction to the uh, Kwame Nkrumah circle. circle. Yeah. And so I'm always there. We have at this juncture given it on contract to Zoom Lion to desilt the drain and then to another company to rebuild the storm drain. And uh, I'm always there to keep my eye on it to make sure that the work is, is going on mm. and that uh, we are doing a good job. I am also there from, uh, because we have now re uh, moved all the illegal structures. That yeah, existed. I was about coming to that, yeah, that, that I could see some demolitions and yeah. clearing of uh, yes. some because of the Because we couldn't, we couldn't desilt the Odor River because of those illegal structures. You know, people have mounted and built their illegal structures all over the place, right at the mouth of the, of the, of the storm drain. And so we could not. It was virtually impossible for us to go in and desilt it. So after this, uh, the, 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 the flood, we cleared the whole place, and today now we can put equipment and machines there to desilt. And we are also looking at what we need to do from the Odor southerning into the, into the lagoon and then into the ocean, because we need to, we need to desilt, complete the desilting of the Odor River and where it also enters into the, uh, the, 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 the Kali Lagoon and desilt that before it gets into the ocean. If we do not do that, anything that we desilt up north will not flow. You know, we have to give it a free passage into the, into the lagoon and then into the, into the ocean. So I'm always at Kwame Nkrumah Circle because I want to maintain the standard of beautification that we have brought to the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. Now, today, Kwame Nkrumah Circle is a beautiful, beautiful place. It has become a centerpiece of our of our uh, city. Also, when it bears the names of our f first president, you know, we have to, we have to, we have to give respect to to the to the centers that we create to in our communities. Especially when we put the name of our you know prominent people on the people who have made contribution for our development, regardless of what party is in power, whether it is NDC, MPP, CPP. These are people who have served our nation. You know, and we have, when, when, when we put their names on things, I believe that we have to give it a due respect hmm. that uh, it deserves. Regardless of the party you belong, we have to give the respect to our heroes who have done the nation proud. And uh, that is the effort that the, uh, the mayor of Accra, His Excellency, Alfred Van der Poel, is trying to put together to ensure that Accra becomes one of the neatest cities we have in the world. One other area that I, I hope I'm not uh, probing you too much. Sir. No. All right, sir. Uh, uh, most times you are going on the road or you are driving past, you see people carrying their, uh, their, their, their wares, running for your, for, your, for your staffs. Why should they be running away? You know, maybe they are selling by the roadside. Oh. And uh, the yeah. moment they see anybody in uniform mm -hmm. and they say, oh, AMA people have come, <laughs> and then you see them running. You mean the hawkers? Yeah. The hawkers, yes. So, well, you know, so what are you doing to, to our system now? You know, the hawkers are a prominent feature of the city of Accra. And uh, uh, normally I would say there is nothing wrong with hawking. Because, you know, when I was growing up, uh, there were people who hawked in our communities. You know, I remember the uh, people who would come uh, with uh, Yokegari and uh, Tatali, you oh, know, we will sit down, buy it, and we eat. Or the cocoa woman will come, and we will buy it. People have been walking since time immemorial. Unfortunately, today, hmm. two things wrong with the way we hawk. The okay. two things that are wrong is that we have children and our young ladies and our young men who should be in school getting education and getting training and getting skills hawking. That one is wrong. Secondly, today, the places where we are hawking, is wrong. Today we are not hawking in the communities. Today we are following traffic as 
a hawking trail or center. Mm. And so that today the hawking activities is being done or some of them want to do it on our roads and they want to compete with traffic. When the traffic, where there is traffic, they also want to create hawking activities. So they are bringing market into the streets. Mm. And when they do that, number one, they put their lives in danger. You know, and if we should allow that to happen, when we know the dangers, because so many uh, youth have been killed because they wanted to make or earn a living by hawking on the streets. I saw one personally myself, you know, at Malam Junction, you know, when uh, a young lady was hit by the vehicle in one lane, thrown into the other lane, and was hit by the second vehicle. You know, that is precious life. So for me, I think it is wrong for us to sit down and now allow people to lose their lives in the, in the attempt to earn a living, mm. you know, because maybe we say, oh, there is unemployment. No, there is unemployment everywhere, all over the world. There is un unemployment in America. There's unemployment in Europe. But when you go there, you don't see people coming to the streets to come and hawk, you know. So what is wrong is wrong. If we have respect for life, then we should not use the excuse of the fact that there is unemployment to say it justifies to go onto the street to go and hawk, you know? Because we as leaders must provide guidance and we must provide leadership, uh, you know, uh, 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 leadership. We must provide the leadership that is needed to direct our people to doing the right to doing the right thing. So I say that, look, if you want to hawk, you can hawk anywhere, but leave the streets alone. Now, secondly, uh, people must then go to the markets, they must go to the community to hawk. We started, we made the bold ad attempt to reducing, if not completely eliminating, the hawking on our streets. Because there's another fundamental, uh, you know, truth to the whole thing. It creates a lot of sanitation challenges for us in the city it creates a lot of environmental challenges for us when you go to the principal streets and whilst the city is trying to build the environment that is conducive for our livelihood in terms of creating fresh air in terms of creating environment that is clean then you have the hawkers coming in trampling upon the trees the plants that we have we, we have planted on the on the pavements on the median mm. to allow growing of plants and fresh air you know then they trample on it and they kill them and then secondly they also sell the water sachets and other things and when people buy they drop the you know chassis and other things on the streets mm. and we have to come back sweep the streets you know all this causes money money that can be used for development you know, so when we say people should not hawk on the streets, there are several reasons, including the need for us to safeguard our precious lives. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's well, why sometimes when they know they are doing the wrong thing, when they see the city guards and they see me, who is the chief city guard, then they are running away. <laughs> uh, please, uh, just do the right thing so that when you see the chief uh, city guard, you will not run again. You would rather walk up to him and have a handshake with him yes. and say, oh, well done, Your Excellency. Now, but w what has been the support so far uh, from the people? Are they, are they seeing it in a good light? Or they, they feel uh, you are too much on them? Well, you know, uh, the market, the Traders Association have applauded the AMA for pick, taking the step okay. to say that people should not hawk on the streets. They have done that because they know that that gives them a bad image themselves. So they themselves have said that, no, we should not allow people to hawk. They have invited us and they have invited the hawkers to say, come into the market. There is space for you in the market. We have over 36 markets in Accra. They say, come in, and then there is space for you. Um, we have some media houses who have also supported us. They made announcements. They've reminded the people on the need not to hawk. But unfortunately, we have other media houses that have not been very supportive. Let me give you a similar example, a typical example. When we started this thing, it was going very well. Until about four or five months ago, when I had to travel with the Minister for Trade and Industry to Sweden. And the second day after I left Accra to Sweden, 
this paper came out and said the president had called me and ordered me to stop harassing hawkers in Accra. And then they went to one particular radio station and, 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 and talk about this thing in various languages, especially in their current language, several times, the whole day, the following day, telling people that, oh, now the mayor of Accra cannot you know, harass them. They need to can do, can go about their businesses and everything should be fine. And so, you know, given the level of the level of illiteracy in our community, you know, the, the hawkers also took it that, oh, yeah, that is the gospel of the day. That is the gospel of the hour. And, and they believed in it. And then they came back right onto the streets again, you know. And so now the AMA had to go back, educate the people and say that, look, this is not true. You know, but we were at a point where we were making progress, you know. So sometimes I wonder if we are all in a country and in a city that all of us want the development of this city. I said last week that when we do the right thing and we are developing the, this country, we should all support it. Regardless of our political party, we need to stop playing politics with our development. You know, but sometimes some radio stations, some TV stations, some media houses think that we should play politics with our development. It will always cost us when we do a thing like that. Well, let's try to work together to ensure that we build a united nation for ourselves and then for those that are coming behind us. Yeah, Your Excellency, let's look at the issue of roads. Uh, what had been your effort? What had been the effort of uh, uh, your administration? Uh, in the area of road, because uh, that is one other issues uh, that we, 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 we need to really tackle. Yes, you know, uh, road development is very important to our national development. The more uh, better roads that we have, the more people can get to work on time, the, well, the more people can save money that they have to, they may normally have, have spent in repairing their vehicles, and the more you know, people can have good, safe travel time. Mm. So road net, good road network is very, very important. And so in Accra, uh, being the capital city, and know the volume of vehicles that we have, we have always attempted to make sure that we are on the drawing board, looking, working with the urban roads to ensure that we have good uh, roads in Accra. Um, so, you know... We, it, is our, it is our goal to reduce the, the level of um, um, roads that are not effective for our transportation usage. For example, we have you know, always found means to see how we can direct traffic in Accra in such a way that as road accessibility is set that road and uh, uh, improve our uh, transportation movement mm. in Accra. And I can give you specific examples. Yeah. You know, we have looked at, for example, the Sprinters Road. There mm. used to be uh, heavy traffic from the high street onto Independence Avenue, onto all the way to airport, and then that enclave going to East Legon or onto the motorway. And that is why we have come up with a bypass from the Polo Ground through Sprinters Road onto that community. That is going on right now. In fact, part of it has been opened so that to ease the congestion of traffic in that area. Um, then when you go into some of the communities in Accra, like we are working on the Dansuman Road, which will okay. be finished yeah. next month. Next month, the people of Dansuma ought to know that uh, their community will be new. I, I used to live in Dansuma, you know, so I know uh, the mm, your your Dan Excellency, Suman. the Dansuman people are watching this program. Yes. And uh, if that is going to be an assurance that by next month, which is February. Oh, I'm telling uh, you. This is January, uh, Your Excellency. Yes. Uh, yes. Looking at the contractors and everybody. Yes. Are, is, is, is it a promise? Uh, I'm promising the people of Dansuma okay. that before 6 March, which will be the, 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 the celebration of Ghana's independence, I'll give them a, a, an independence gift. Wow. The Dansuma Road will be completed. And they will have access to dualization, you know, double roads on each side. Uh, we are working on that, and that will happen. I know it's been long coming, uh, uh, but that will happen. We are serious. The Dansuma Road will happen. Why should the Dansuma Road happen? Because, you see, uh, by that time, we would have opened the Malam uh, Road, 
the media construction. The media construction which is coming all the way from um, uh, Akaswa into Accra and coming into Kanishi, that construction would have been opened and then the flyovers would be uh, in place. And, and All we, this before 6th March? Oh, yes, my brother. When we, when, look, when the, when the president said better Ghana agenda, it means that whatever has existed before, we should make it better. If we don't do that, then we have failed the people. But I'm telling you that Ghanaians will give this president the mandate for a second term because we are working. We are, we, we are not talking. <laughs> we are working, working, working very hard. Mm. People are seeing the evidence of what we call better Ghana agenda. People are seeing development at their doorsteps. Mm. I'm telling you, this, this, this will be open. The, 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 the media construction will be finished before March. It will be open before March. And then the, the Dansuma Road will be completed. Now people, no, we have also now linked that something that didn't was not there before. The, there had never been in the history of this country where people from Accra, I mean Gamashi, from Jamestown to Kolegon to Mamplobi to Old Dansoma. When you got to Old Dansoma, you couldn't go, come to the news development like uh, Dansoma, Sakama. It has never been impossible. But under this government, I remember when we used to go to school and we would walk from Dansoma to coming to Mamplobi, when we would get to the stream. Eh? And whether it has rained or not, we would stop at the stream. And sometimes if it has rained, you would take off your shoes and then you walked over the stream, which is the extension of the Mamponse stream, all the way through uh, Pump, uh, uh, Banana Inn, eh? Banana Inn, uh, Mataheko, those communities mm. today it is a new it is it's a new way of life today there is a link there is a road now you can come from the high street go through choco go through Mamponse, mm. and drive into these new communities that's so my estates that is development that is what professor atamels has done for the people of accra you can now cross over and drive over we have just also opened road from pambros Pambros, where we, you know, where we, 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 we develop the salt. Yeah. Now you can go and drive through Pambros all the way into Dansoma and, and Choco and Mamponse onto the high street. Wow. That well, is what we, we call we, development. We, 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 we look forward to all this greater work. But, but let me tell you more. Because uh, oh. look, look yeah. we, are, we are also going to finish, <laughs> we are going to finish the uh, Accra Nima Road. We are finishing the Accra in Samoan Road. road and then we are bringing about first in africa traffic management system which will start in february latest by march traffic management system we will have the same system that new york has we will have the same system that london has we will have the same system that chicago has we will have the same system that uh, beijing uh, what do you call it beijing has you understand? So that there will be, uh, there, there will be, there will be, there will, there, will, there will be directional signs. There will be effective traffic system, and then there will be effective, effective, uh, what do you call it? Emergency traffic management system, where people will sit and monitor. And when they see that a car has broken down, there will be an emergency service quickly to come to you, move you out of the road, so traffic will move. Well, uh, Your Excellency, the, I, I tell you, uh, I, I'm being carried away with some of these things. Traffic <laughs> manage, management system. First uh, in Africa. First in Africa. Of course, this will be uh, a good one if we can have it right here it in happen. Ghana. And it's going to happen, according to His Excellency, the Mayor of Accra, His Excellency Honorable Alfred Frandapua, that is going to happen right here in Accra. Uh, that he hasn't given date. You know, he gave some specific date before March 6th. We're going to see so much... Uh, improvement so much of changes around but the traffic management management system maybe is, is trying to inch me that look i will still tell you the yes. time then I, I don't i won't go for break uh -huh. yeah uh viewers please uh, because of the importance of this uh, uh program i will not be going for any break today we want to really flow. Yeah. Yeah. traffic management management system yes when is it coming we want we will start it by february okay. but i can guarantee you that by 
December of this year, 80% of that work would have completed. Because we would have, by, by December, we would have built the, 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 the building at Kanishi, at, the, at, the, at our urban road center, where we will manage the traffic in Accra, from which we will monitor the traffic in Accra. And then we would have completed some of the infrastructure. All the directional signs would have been on our roads. So that when you are traveling day or night, you will have a clear sign telling you where you are going, how many miles before you get to a particular junction. And all the traffic infrastructure would have been in place. No traffic light would not work in Accra under this program. All traffic signals in Accra will work day and night. All the traffic lights will work day and night in Accra. And all directional signs would have been in place before December this year. Wow. What, what an interesting uh, information for us there. Then, if you are doing all this for the people, what is the education that you want to pass across to the people? Because one thing is for the system to be there. Yes. It's another thing to allow the system to work. Yes. What are the measures to ensure that this system works? Yes, sustainability is very, very important. Mm. Not only should we create, but we must also sustain what we create. And not only should we create, and not only should, should we, we sustain, sustain, but we must also maintain yeah. what, we, what we, you know, create. Want to so sustain. the culture of creation must go and be balanced with the culture of maintenance and the culture of monitoring, you know. And education plays a very significant role in this. So the AMA will take upon itself and ensure that we give proper education, have teams in place to monitor what we have created, and maintain it so that our traffic lights will work at all times, and then we'll have officers on the roads to, to make sure that people are doing the right thing. If somebody runs into a traffic light, there will be cameras on our streets. If you are speeding, is it part camera. of the traffic management yes, system? Yes. That there will be cameras yes, around. There will be cameras on all of our major streets of Accra to monitor what motorists are doing, who is driving recklessly, who is driving without, you know, uh, proper regulations. We will monitor all that and we will take your license. Perhaps, away. perhaps I will allow His Excellency to tell us for the first time, perhaps on Trailblazers Africa, what is the speed limit that is expected <laughs> in Accra so okay. that uh, your, your, the camera will not pick you? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, because before we will start the implementation, yeah. we will come out with the programs and we will also post the speed limit okay. on, 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 on our roads. On our roads, right. yes. So that people will know what, uh, you know, because you see, 